listen, this is not a self-help video. All right, let's, let's get into it. In my lifetime, I can probably count on one hand how many days I've had that were actually bad. And from now on, you will rarely, if ever, have a bad day. I want to share a perspective I had since I was 11, the strategy I've used to handle bad days uh, and the science behind it. The philosophy is you don't have bad days, just bad moments. Now this ain't some always happy, always fond of life, you can't get me down. No, this ain't Disney. And that's why I still call bad moments bad moments because getting a flat tire is a bad thing. We can all agree on that. What's under the microscope here is how we let these bad moments dictate our emotional posture for the rest of the day. Handling emotions is nothing we're given a syllabus for. It's another fundamental part of being a human that we have to figure out on our own. Yay. Like taxes and, and, and credit. No. Would you rather have your dream body for five years straight or have to pay no taxes for five years straight? Uh. I don't know, I like the journey. I'll probably do taxes. Hello, Tony. Would you rather have your favorite food anytime you want it or a good credit score? Am I paying for the food? It's on cue, it just appears as soon as you want it. Oh, my favorite food. I do think there are some great sources that teach you how to handle emotions. The Bible, people, parents, peers. But the greatest source you'll find is actually you. Can you think of something that you're good at that yourself taught in that you taught yourself and I'm not talking about a hard skill necessarily like I taught myself how to do video like my camera this microphone the audio the lighting all the stuff you're getting those are hard skills that I had to teach myself but I learned them from external sources so I had to read forums I had to watch YouTube tutorials what's something you intuitively taught yourself from the inside and my phone just ran off I'm, I'm not retaking that when you're learning intrinsically you're not reading a book on it you're learning from you what's something that you've learned from you it's a hard question well emotional awareness is what you're about to add to your self-taught resume today I ain't teaching you though you're finna teach yourself If you're in first place in Mario Kart and someone throws a blue shell, you are going to get hit. You can't avoid it. The same goes for negative emotions, people, life events, circumstances. These things are going to throw blue shells and there's nothing we can do about it. I've never seen someone get hit by a blue shell and just stop driving. Like just put the controller down and give up. No, we get hit by the blue shell. We let our car do all the flipping and flopping and then we get back into the race. We can't control our emotions, only our response to them. And we know this, but some of you, and I'm about to call you out, like feeling bad. When you're having a bad day, you want to stay there. You don't really want to fix it. And I'm going to get into the science in a bit here, but my theory is that it's just easier to not fix it. Fixing our emotional posture is a hard job. And humans will always take the path of least resistance. Oh no. I wonder which direction I should choose. I also wonder why I don't have any legs. It's our default. That's why going to the gym is one of the hardest habits to keep up. Because think about it, you're paying money to get up and drive to a location to put your body through actual, literal, physical resistance. So, you and me, me, me and you, us, together, me and you, us, us. We're going to go to the emotional gym. What we're talking about is emotion regulation. Here's the strategy. Become aware of your emotion, sit in it, and then let it subside. I'm from Chicago, or Ch Chicago adjacent. I'm, I'm from the suburbs. The Chicago River downtown is dyed green every year for St. Patrick's Day. It takes a slew of union workers on big old boats to dye the river. Now, the entire Lake of Michigan, which is connected to the river, doesn't all turn green. Just this contained part of the river. Not only that, but the dye doesn't even last for the entire day. Just a few hours and the river is back to normal. So the river is only green for a moment. How do we get to a point where we can regulate our emotions in the moment and spare the rest of our day? Let's get into some science. Some things are just common sense, like two plus two equals four. You know that. You probably can't explain why it equals four, but you know it off bat. Getting four minutes into one of my videos and hitting the like button is just, it just makes sense. You probably can't explain why it makes sense, but you know it's true. Hit, 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 just hit the like button, please. Of all the feelings and emotions under the umbrella, what can you decipher? Deciphering our emotions is called emotional granularity. Adults with low granularity tend to describe their emotions in clusters. What's wrong? I'm irritated. 
What's wrong? I said that. I feel like low emotional granularity is a trait of those of us that have whole bad days. High emotional granularity, obviously being the opposite, the opposite side of the spectrum, consists of those that can describe their emotions in a more fine grained fashion. And contrary to popular belief, this study found that just because you're older, don't mean you're good at this. you know somebody older who just ain't there with their emotions regardless of where we are this is something that we could all work on it's plain season uh, what airport is this this study states one of the viable strategies is observing describing and allowing emotions to flow without judging them or trying to inhibit them this is hard and i'm not sure if many people are doing this intentionally i want to give you a strategy that i have tried and still Try. One day I woke up on a Saturday morning feeling absolutely whack. I mean the embodiment of whack. W-H-A-C-K. Take the H out. I felt whack without the H. W-A-C-K. Whack. <laughs> I had to go into work this morning and I'm a fitness instructor. As a fitness instructor, you aren't really allowed to hinder the experience of the people you're serving just because you have a crappy mood. So you have to be on and present. I walk in and as I'm setting up, I just, I realized I didn't want to continue with the crappy mood. I just stopped what I was doing. I pulled my phone out and I just started to speak my thoughts into the recording. I started off with a pivotal question. I said, I woke up feeling crappy today. Why do I feel this way? This was so rewarding because I was able to pinpoint the exact things that made me feel crappy. This didn't instantly boost me, but I was able to gain clarity and still give a good workout without a cloud over my head. See, that was almost a bad day, but I stopped it. And this is why this is so hard because we have to stop what we're doing and we tend to not be great at that these days. And we have to literally ask ourselves, why do I feel this? Like, what caused this emotion? What interaction? What person? What news did I get that made me feel bad? More strategy. How can we make this an easy process? First step, okay, we have to stop what we're doing. Second step, give yourself 60 seconds. Set a timer and say, can I process my emotions in 60 seconds? This strategy is next level because even if you can't pinpoint the source, your mind is working in a way that it isn't used to. This is that intrinsic work I was talking about, teaching yourself. If you got any value out of this at all, please leave a like. Um, the best way to boost this channel is to watch another one of my videos. That is the way YouTube works. So I appreciate your time. I'm gonna get about y'all way.